Hello! Yeah, another unplanned uh, stream today. Okay, so what is this about? Um, so, yeah, I've been thinking about uh, doing something for DOS for a while, and and then I saw someone sharing this on Mastodon, which is a DOS game jam, um, which is basically a competition that you're supposed to make a DOS game. Or, well, not a DOS game. Um, yeah, it's a casual jam, so it's not like... It has to be, you know, DOS-inspired. It doesn't need to be a DOS game. But I thought, well, whatever. I mean, I can make a DOS game, because that's what I want to do, really. And it's actually quite weird, because you're not supposed... I'm not completely sure you need to start to make the game on this day. So submissions are open starting on the 1st of June to the 17th of July. Um, but looking at the rules, you know, uh, inspired by PC games from DOS era, um, any state of work is fair to submit, previously published games starting from scratch. Anyway, they just want games and yeah, I thought it's a good excuse. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing probably too many things already, so... I think I kind of like the idea of doing this as a kind of jam game. So something small or simple because I don't want to be like, you know, my usual three, four months or, or more working on, on, on a game. Uh, so let's do something simple. Uh, it may not be much of a game. And then I see if I like it. So. I'm going to try to group all all these sessions together and I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to hold myself and do, try to not do things uh, out of the stream. Although it's not going to be a tutorial. Uh, it's very likely that the, open, the, 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 the source code would be open source anyway, so you would be able to play with it. It's not a tutorial. So, but I'm going to explain something what I'm doing, uh, you know, like I always do. Um, so, uh, I have a little bit of a plan. So, this is the things I would like to do. Um, I want... Okay, so I, I did some DOS programming back in the day. Um, and actually, I use some of the tools I plan to do, to use now. Uh, it's slightly different, right? Because uh, I was using them in DOS. And now what I plan to do is cross-compile from Linux to DOS. So it's not exactly the same, but it's going to be similar tools. Um, and so I kind of... I, I didn't do a lot, but yeah, I, I, I have some experience with this. Um, but I want to learn, right? So I I don't want to use a library and then spend mo most of my time trying to understand how the library works. So I, I'm going to try to do something small, simple on my own when it makes sense, right? Because if, if I want to make something quick <clears throat> and probably submit that by the 17th of July, I'm not going to start programming the the Sound Blaster from scratch, right? You know, when, when it makes sense, I might do, you know, setting the setting the graphic mode to use the VGA card. It's easy, right? So I can do that. Set the palette, the palette um, have a blitter uh, by software. Uh, you know, measure time. How can we vsync the VGA? And a tick counter, so we can. Yeah, we need to measure the the, the uh, measure time, so we can count ticks, and you know ensure that the game moves to a ticks frame rate. Um, yeah, we need some input. Uh, initially, the keyboard. I'm not sure about the joystick. Probably keyboard only, but we'll see. 
uh, then I would rather you know make a simple entity system for sound I want some raster samples and perhaps either a mod player or only music I'm not completely sure for those I'm going to use a library very likely some library that is compatible with the compiler I'm going to use uh, then for data I've been doing some research and it looks like I think I'm going to embed the data in the in the in the X in the X file in the binary because yeah I was looking up something small that I could you know one of those single file libraries to load PNG or BMP or whatever but they don't tend to you know I haven't found any that supports uh, indexed images with palettes so and then I thought well it really doesn't matter uh, I can just embed the binary. I'm not going to use a lot of data anyway, so I can save myself loading that from disk. Uh, I mean, in a way, this is more or less what I usually have to do when I make a game for an A-B system, right? You know, some screens, menu game over, you know, usual game. Um, now, the compiler I'm going to use is going to be... Do I have that open? No. I'm going to use a DJ GPP, which is actually my first ever, ever um, contact with GCC and uh, compilers of the of, of NU back in the day in DOS. I had a Pentium uh, PC with DOS, and you know, this this compiler was available in a CD from a magazine, so. Before that, I was using, you know, like almost everybody, like Turbo C, uh, Borland C, whatever. And then I kind of started using this and I moved to use this. Um, so this is what I'm going to use, uh, which means that it's targeting 32 bits. So we're going to be 386 uh, or later. So it's not going to work with um, in older PCs. Um, you know, which is a shame, but this this tool is great because you know I can just compile in my Linux and generate the X for for those and try that in those box without getting you know. And it is a modern compiler. I mean, I think uh, so. So the one I com I I I prepared for this is actually GCC twelve one. So we're going to use a modern. C compiler, which is nice for a change because when I work for the AB systems, I don't have access to a modern C compiler, which is kind of awful sometimes. I'm not complaining. I'm glad we have a C compiler, but yeah, it's not great. Um, so yeah, so that has this has some consequences, some some implications. So one of them is that this one it works with a DOS extender that I have here already, which back in the day it was Go32, but now is CWSD PMI. Catchy name. And yeah, so what what it what means really is that it's going to run in 32 bit. So in the protected mode or 32 bit protected mode in DOS which, you know, has some problems. And I think one of the risks of this project and trying to do things in a short period of time is that I'm not very familiar with the DOS extender or DG, DJ, GPP or any of the stuff I'm going to do. So it can be quite tricky if I remember correctly. Uh, I mean, I did a mod, I, I wrote a mod player back in the day for DOS and, and a few things like that. So, um, yeah, it can be complicated because of that, because DOS is 16-bit uh, and runs in real mode. And th the game I'm going to make will run in protected mode and 32-bit mode, which has some benefits as well. One of the benefits is that I'm going to have access to all the memory. Um, it's going to be difficult to access to the 540k of DOS of the real mode, but I mean, I think I'm saying things properly. 
don't don't quote me i mean i i'm not an expert but so basically um that means that it's fine to embed uh the data in the x file because i mean the first my first pc was uh it has 512k of ram but then many years after that many years when I upgraded, I finally could upgrade. I got a Pentium and it has like eight megabytes of RAM. I'm not going to use eight megabytes of RAM in the game. So I think it's absolutely fine. Um, there could be, I remember there were some issues, at least with Gold 32, um, because if you're running Windows, because Windows comes with its own. Um, DOS extender, but it it's not a problem anymore, I think, because basically back then you were doing a game with, you know, you were making software with this, and it's likely that people were running in a real hardware, right? But now it's super easy running things in DOSBox, and obviously I mean running Linux, I don't have DOS, I don't have a machine to run this software anyway, and so I'm not going to be interacting with Windows. So I think that's going to be okay. I don't think it's going to cause any problems. So well, what I have done so far is, is I mean, let's, let's clean this and then. So basically what I have is the DOS standard here. I have a simple configuration of DOS box that the only thing is going to do is start mount current directory and execute the game then i have okay so so here i mean yeah basically you know ms ms uh, ms is also compatible operating system initial extender uh, some RAM, I don't know how much RAM, it has to be 386 three, or later. Um, and you know, development for now, this is what I'm using. Um, I might, I swear like that I'm going to write some tools in Python, but it's okay because they're running in, in Linux, so it's never going to be a problem. So I did cross compile, um, I, I prepare this DJ GPP for cross compilation with this project here. Uh, that is quite cool. So basically, uh, all right. So basically it took a long time for current standards, right? Which it was not that much, but it was a little bit. And yeah, it, it, it cross compile everything, right? And you can choose the, you know, I was using, I, I choose the latest version of GCC that was available. Um, so with that, you know, I have GCC compiled with patches and to generate, to cross compile to those in a directory. Um, right. So then I have a main that the only thing is does is hello DOS. And when it compiles, it uses the cross compiler. I'm going to use C99. I don't know why, because I could be using whatever. Well, I might even change that because it doesn't matter. I could use the latest standard available and it really doesn't matter because it's a modern UCC. Uh, but I guess using C99 could be useful if someone tries to compile this with an older version of GCC, I guess. I don't know. So I'm targeting uh, 386 and, you know, the general stuff. And basically, you know, it's compiling, linking, and so it's game, right? So it's basically a DOS. And it's a hello world and it's already quite big. <laughs> Can I make it smaller? No, I am, I am already stripping. Let's try that. Strip. Does it have a strip? I did already strip. 
No, I didn't. Well, I thought I was used the S here, right? Oh no, it was not right in the linking. Anyway, um, I don't plan to debug, so it's 66 kilobytes. It sounds a little bit too much, but you know, it has things from the libc and it has all the client for the DOS expander here. And then I have another target that is basically, I kind of, which is run the start DOS box and it, you know, it runs the game that only does hello DOS. Um, so. so so what i'm doing here is uh, okay because it's the early flags okay so here we can just say a strip and the strip here is it was wrong because oh look at this it's bigger why is bigger now <laughs> That's weird. Oh, oh, because the C flags here apparently it uh, uh, also makes uh, effects. So, could it be that? No, it's, it's not. I think the, the strip is not doing anything, it's doing it now here. Or maybe I don't need to do that here. And then I can do anyway. It really doesn't matter. I is I'm probably not going to use uh, GDB. Uh, although I could really. Okay, let's try that. Um, but then I will need to change the dodge box here. So, so I remove the street. Yeah, but I don't hope. Yeah, I'm not doing it properly because because no. So the GDB that have cost compile is in no. It's not going to work. Yeah, I don't plan to use it anyway. So I don't think I can use it because it will have to run. I will need GDB to be running on in DOS. I guess I could be doing that. I mean, if I get to the point where things are really, really bad and I don't have... I mean, in, in A-bit systems, sometimes I use the uh, debugger, but it's kind of difficult because if the code that is causing problems is written in C, you don't have... You, you see assembler, right? Set uh, ID which is nothing close to the C code you wrote. So, yeah, I think it's what it is. So there is a post at the end, press a post, exit. So it's kind of clean. Um, cool. So, yeah. So this is the base I have and I don't have anything else, so. Now it's matter to start doing things. Uh, oh, there is something outside. It would be perhaps a cat or the hedgehog. We have a hedgehog, a hedgehog that sometimes comes and says hello. Let's see. No, it's not a hedgehog. I think. Anyway, cool. So yeah, now it's start already doing things. Um, uh, I have, I don't really have a plan for the structure. Um, so I guess is thinking as we go. Uh, well, okay. So this make file is kind of flexible because it's basically anything that I drop as a C file in the source directory, it's going to compile it and it's going to be available. 
so i guess we can start doing something right so let's do some bga so what are we going to do um so i guess okay so i've been collecting some documentation here so basically uh in dust heaven we have a lot of links to things that we can use uh and it has reference to some libraries and some open source uh, and then i have a few things here related to D, DJ GPP. <laughs> but I'm not completely sure about this because all this documentation is from 95, 96. I mean, I found this in Spanish actually, and the copyright is from 98. That sounds pretty old now uh, because all this stuff here is pretty much from, from you know, from when DJ GPP 2.0 was released. Um, anyway, so yeah, let's do BGA stuff, right? So this is basically what we're going to do. So we're going to call this set uh, thin and yeah, okay, so this is going to need more encode, right? So it's going to need uh, what is meant? Set? Is it string or it is in a string now, okay. So, so this is like this. Or maybe we should do like. Okay, I'm going to use my. Standard here. So. And we can set the mode. Then mode. Uh, do I need to do this? Yeah, because I'm not going to have access to this. DTMI Rex. Okay, 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 okay. I think I have, yeah. So this is DPMI Rex so registers, right? Is it defined here mm, somewhere or maybe we can go to DPMI and then there is going to be int so we call it an int interrupt there you go and then oh there is no link to, to this structure I don't like it. Okay, Rex. There you go. I'm wondering. Can I do something like this? And it will that avoid us to do the Can I do that? The structure. Uh, well, I didn't type it properly. So wait. What happened? So... non team name DPMI Rex. Well, 
it's not a good start. What is this defined? I assume is defined in here, right? Oh, maybe it's because I'm reading it wrong. That was a bad idea. No, that's not going to be a bad idea. It's just that it's failing to compile something. DPMI. Huh. Huh. Okay. So I installed this in, in here, right? Where are the includes? That would be a problem, right? Okay. I'm confused. Why is not... Okay. Yeah, this is exactly the same thing we're looking at. Um... Actually, did it complain about failing? No, it's saying unknown type name, DPMI flex, DPMI. So that's what I'm including here. And I see the file, DPMI. There you go. You see it, right? Two underscores, DPMI flex. Oh, very good start. Mm, I don't know what is the problem. A non time name. And I can see here, isn't it? the union dpmi rex what interesting um, so i suspect there's something funny going on here um Let's take a look to something, please. So, can I just open this URL, please? Mm, bum, 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 bum. Okay, so maybe I did something wrong. Okay, uh, using the GBA compiler, use the full name. You use a compiler short name, you have changed environment variable. Oh, this is this is missing. This is missing. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. So, base here is going to be this stuff here. Yeah, that's why it's not working. And now, this one to run it here <laughs> why not is that correct right um so that was not it that's not it uh, Ah, ha, ha. 
yeah there is not the vpni here uh, so it has to be somewhere else so there's nothing in here either and in here have c6 include what the i don't understand okay so that was not needed i think but it's not telling me so so it's including it but it's not using it for some weird reason I don't understand. So it looks like he's not including that. Yeah, for the... F okay. So... Well... I don't know what to do then. Yeah. Implicit de declaration of, of the function. So this include is not doing anything. That's a problem, isn't it? So that include is not working. <laughs> Why is not working? Um, no idea, but it's including it for sure. So if I do here this, yeah, it's including it. Sorry, uh, it's actually formatting stuff now. Um, oh, the light is again on, and I don't see anybody. There must be a cat. Anyway, it's formatting this. I don't like that it's doing the formatting, but it's okay. Um, so there is something wrong here. There's something wrong. So it's including the file, uh, but I think something is not letting this through. So this is only if it's not defined POSIX source. What does it mean? I don't know. Uh, okay, so let's investigate, shall we? Okay, so I have the source code of Allegro here. So, okay, so there is a VGA here. And what is this doing? <laughs> no, we need to look for. Oh no, I don't have, it's not a git repo. Uh, so... This maybe? Okay. Uh, 
Was include a river first. Okay, fine. Um, do, 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 do. So let's take a look. See if I can find if they do something funny that I'm not doing. Okay. Look at those. Something is wrong with the make pipe. Okay, so this one is has the magic, I believe. Well, no idea. See, that's why I don't want to use a library uh, because I need to learn how to use it. Um, yeah, but I'm having the same problem because I don't know how to actually make this include work. So I guess the problem is that, oh, what is that you? Uh, I, I probably broke it by doing the edit. No, that one. This one. Okay, so those things are not working because it's, it's included in the file, but there is something defined here that is not liking it. Okay, so what do we do? Hmm. Why is, what is that POSIX source? Let's see if we can find what it means. What the bind POSIX source means? What well, this is in the file, see, uh, I can access more libraries? Oh, ah, that's not true. To push this that part, it's in the C library that I part, POSIX one. It's obsolete. I should be. What's this source? <laughs> well, thank you. But that's not very helpful, right? Anyway, um, well, this seems to be okay. Then there is a hello here. Oh, brilliant. It's not doing anything. Um, this is doing a little bit more, but it's not really doing what I need to do. Hmm. So the only thing I can think of is that I'm making a mistake here by providing this standard. Okay. So it was my fault. Fair enough. There you go. So we can use that. Okay, it's never going to do anything. Okay, so um Okay. And then... 
No. Bishop, Bishop who are writing this in the, in the past and then moving back to text mode is three right yes um okay so where are you where are you now okay we don't need this one anymore uh okay so we need to get a read a key right Ooh, console input output that's really good okay so let's do that Okay, so we need to include what? I'm confused. Ah, oh, okay, because things. I don't really know what is the standard in C, really. I always get confused. Um, where do you put those includes? Okay. SVGA. Press a tip. Yay! Cool. Uh, so... That's one thing done, right? Do we need to do anything else about this? I don't think we do. Hmm. Cool. So that is set in the mode. Anything else that we need to set up the, the graphic mode? No, probably not. Okay, let's do another one. And um, before we end the, the day. Um, so, setting the mode right into the frame buffer. Yeah, okay, so this is, I think, something I've been thinking about. So, yeah. I have read this and basically it's telling, my, telling me that I can have a back buffer and then I can dump that with those mainboard, which is basically so this is a problem of uh, our game being in protected mode and it's using different you know it's in a different space in the CPU um, and we need to access to the frame buffer of the VGA uh, graphic card which is in real mode so those men put allows us to do that but i'm not completely sure if i like it because it puts the entire frame buffer so this is using a back buffer so if we do this it means that every time we update even a pixel we're going to dump 64 Ks. Oh, look at this. That's beautiful. 
referring to physical memory locations. Ah, oh, interesting. So I was expecting this to be adre the address, but no, it has to be this one. Interesting. Uh, okay, so I don't like this because it means copying a lot of memory around. Far pointers. I don't like this as well because I, we're not going to put a pixel, a pixel, you know, we're going to make more. So I don't like this one either. Um, and yeah, this is likely what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is, oh, let's do this. I like this. I like this. Uh, so, um, ooh. so how are we going to do this? So, see, set mode. Yeah. He was sent it to do, but I didn't write it down. Okay, so um, so we can call open. It is very misleading. This is not what is it doing, but I like it. So what is this is going to do is this uh, and if it doesn't work would it on null that is going to be bad and otherwise We're going to return these four zeros and then this one. You must recognize the screen pointer every time you enter this mode because can change. When you malloc new any other misc stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, uh, uh yeah, once per frame, preferably when I start up. Yeah, fine. So we can do open frame buffer and then we can do close frame buffer. And it's just like this. And that should do it. So we open the frame buffer and we close it. Although in reality, I mean Yeah, it turns off all memory protection on the DOS memory area, which means that if we make mistakes, it will crash things and the DOS extender won't have a chance of telling us uh, what, what is happening, right? So yeah, it's kind of not great, but it means that we can just say um, whatever screen it was calling it screen right so we can say open if not the screen
<laughs> Which is something I just invented. So it's going to be... It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We can do that. We can actually do it even better. Like... And... and we probably should be exiting, right? Like... Like, it was very bad. So we go away. And then at the end, we restore just to let things in a good state, right? And then we can do, for example, what? What we can do? Uh, so we can memset and i never remember the order of memset so it's going to be in a string and what we're going to do is in a screen for example we can use uh, 12 uh, yeah, I think it's 12, 12, 5, I don't remember the colors, and the size is, so that should, it should compare, okay, so we don't have null, it's because null is defined where, it's defined null. Oh, there's a manual for null, but that's not what I wanted. Um, what is null defined? Can't believe it's not defined. It was in a. Yes. There you go. It's working. Ah, excellent. So that's us having access to a frame buffer, to the frame buffer. I think it's great. Uh, let's do something different before we leave. Uh, so... this and then we can say green so standardly we using that already so so what is run doing returns a certain integer from zero max to run max okay so we can do run Uh, sorry, complete the creation of this run. No. Includes. Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry, how include this standard link. This one. Okay. The most impressive thing I have done. Uh, Let's do four screens. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. 
cool. So that works. That's um, that's access to the frame walker. Um, cool, 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 cool. So we have done this too. Then the palette and the blitter. I mean, the blitter is going to be super simple. It's just wrapping around the fact that we have a frame buffer. So nothing, nothing complicated. I think, I think things are going to get difficult when we start doing the tick counter, for example, because we need to set an interrupt handler. I think. And that's the interrupts happen in real mode, but we are in protected mode, so we need to use again uh, our friend here CWSDPMI to actually get that done. Um, for the keyboard, I think we need to do something similar because I believe we need to uh, hook to the keyboard interrupt so. When a key is pressed or released, we can update the, the state of the keys or the keys that we care about or all the keyboard because it's going to be what 256 values or something like that. So we look at that. It's going to be similar. If we get one of them working, the other one should be straightforward. And you know, this is just, I mean, I can copy the code I have already in my 8-bit uh, games, but only in C, right? Because the set, set 80 assembly is not going to work. Uh, but you know, I have one that is very simple in an MSX library that I have open source. So that should be fine. We will take care about this. Yeah, this is going well. I mean, we're going to have the structure. I mean, the difficult thing is going to be making the game really. Because other than that, it's, it's very simple. I mean, obviously, yeah, when I was, yeah, I remember some of these things here being quite confusing because I don't know how old I was when I was working on these, doing these things in, in DOS. Maybe it was 16 or 15. And, you know, the information you had very often, it was articles in a magazine. And yeah, they're not going to, they're going to tell you that's the address, right? Because that's the address in real mode. And then the, the DJ GBP was kind of weird and confusing and complicated and things get difficult if you don't know what you're doing. And it's resetting and you can't really search like we did. <laughs> yeah, so because there was no anything. Anyway, cool. This is looking good. Um, I'm going to leave it here because it's a little bit late and I have to work tomorrow and this was not planned at all. So yeah, first session, um, introducing the project. It's looking good. It's going to be very quick, uh, I think, to get most of these, most of these things on. Uh, it's more just to work on the on the game, really. I mean, I'm kind of inclined to think that these two are done. I mean, in for, for the palette. Uh, yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> the palette, there you go. So, I guess we can do it in different ways, but we probably can just use the, these functions here, you know. The port B and port, you know, and that's it. We probably do we need to get the palette? I mean, I can include the functions, but it's fine. If we don't use them, it's okay. This is not out of code that it will be dead or dead, but yeah, this is super simple. Uh, and we need that to set the palette. And I need to find the palette because 256 colors is too many colors. So I might just use the same 16 colors I'm using um, in my Haskell uh, game with SDL. And actually, I was thinking, I mean, I could, I mean, I'm not going to port that from Haskell because it's, got, it's definitely too long. But I could use some ideas and I could use the palette, for example. Uh, you know, 16 colors, limited palette. I'm, I'm getting familiar with that palette, so it's very likely that I'm 
it's possible that I can draw things that don't look horrible. Um, and yeah, it's looking good. Anyway, enough for the first session. Uh, again, this is not uh, it's not a tutorial. As you can see, I'm making mistakes like like you know setting the the C standard. Bad idea. I might look what GCC, uh, sorry, DJ, DJ GPP is using and then try to stick to that to be explicit, but uh, I think it's probably okay we don't do that. Uh, anyway, see you next time. Bye.